digitaljamsessions.com. Hello and welcome to this Digital Jam session. Today we are joined by two slightly different businesses to what we would normally go with, but I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves. So I'm going to go to, to you first, Gary. Hi, I'm uh, Gary Turner and I keep myself busy being managing director of a cloud accounting software company called Zero mm-hmm. with an X. It's very important I spell that because lots of people... Try with a Z. It's a great, really mm-hmm. cool name, Zero. Mm-hmm. but every time you talk to people about it, you have to spend 15 minutes explaining that it's X instead of Z. Mm. Okay. Why don't you tell us all about craft beer? Yeah, what I'm, um, my name's Anna Valcorza. I'm a Kiwi, as you can probably hear immediately. And I'm one of the co-founders of Honest Brew. So we are an online craft beer retailer. So we send basically mixed cases of craft beer to your door. We work with over 50 breweries from around sort of UK, Europe, US, New Zealand, to basically get their beer in the hands of people around the UK. Okay, wonderful. Well, thanks for joining us today, guys. And I noticed that we're sat here in in the uh, Central Works office. Thank you very much, guys, for hosting us today. And... Obviously, we're talking about a lot of small business. Zero likes to work with smaller businesses and, and you as, as a, you know, a new startup. Mm. You're working to a particular type of size. And so I suppose the first question I, I would ask you, and I'm going to throw this down out of the blue, is what do you feel has been the most useful tool for you, whether that's a cloud tool, a mobile app, or you know, something that has helped really just streamline what you do as, as a new startup and kind of helped you as a crutch along the way? What would you say that has been for you? Yeah, we definitely use technology and pretty much everything that we do because we're an online business. Um, so for us, it's very important that everything sort of integrates and talks to each other, but it makes sense when we talk about zero um, <laughs> since I'm in the room with zero. Um, but we literally, again, this comes from um, this three of us in the team with a New Zealand background. We knew zero from the very beginning. So mm-hmm. before we even started selling, we had our accounting software set up with zero. So mm-hmm. we kind of went about setting our systems up right to begin with. All of our sort of operational software and website integrates with Xero in our bank account so that it makes our life a lot easier really. Mm -hmm. Um, Means we can kind of get on with selling and and doing and getting more craft beer out there in less time kind of trying to figure out what's going on because it's kind of all talking to each other so easy for us to report. Okay, so with the danger that a lot of our listeners may be thinking, oh gosh, zero accounting firm, that's not something I need to know about, or um, it's quite you know, an interesting part of my business. What would you say to these people who are listening to this thinking, I don't really need to know more about zero? What would you tell them? Well, I, I would say that that stereotype is really accurate, actually. I mm. think a lot of people, when you set up in business, you don't do so because you love the idea of bookkeeping. Mm-hmm. Unless, of course, you set up as a bookkeeping business. But aside from that um, category, most startups are there because they're passionate about something, are passionate about what they're doing, mm-hmm. uh, delivering a service, an idea, a product. And accounting and bookkeeping usually comes way down their list of mm-hmm. um, things they love doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that um, certainly... Uh, accounting software hasn't really done much traditionally to challenge that. Trad- traditionally, accounting software that's run on your PC has been clunky, has been almost deliberately difficult to use, and is seen as a chore, and hasn't really challenged that prejudice that a lot of businesses rightly have about accounting. Mm-hmm. And actually, a big part of what was the motivation behind our business forming was, well, if lots of people have a low expectation for accounting and accounting software, wouldn't it be kind of interesting if we could challenge that and actually try and deliver something that people would enjoy using? Mm-hmm. And I think with the advent of the web and cloud and mobile devices, this is a great time to be rethinking some of those old categories. Mm-hmm. And um, and our strapline as a business is deliberately provocative. We call zero beautiful accounting software mm-hmm. because accounting software is the last thing you traditionally think of being beautiful. Mm-hmm. But we've made it our focus to try and try and deliver that for small businesses. Mm-hmm. There's a whole load more in there, and maybe we can get into that over the course of the next few minutes. But mm-hmm. I, I think that um, existing prejudice is there and is, is genuine, mm-hmm. but we see it as our job to try and change that, mm-hmm. try and change people's expectations. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I'd agree with what you've said, and you sort of thing we set about to, to bring the world of craft beer mm-hmm. to people and help them sort of discover 
mm-hmm. this sort of incredible product that's out there. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't set about to, like you say, sit, sit behind our desks and bookkeep. Mm-hmm. Um, but when, what we found with Zero was it was so it's so user friendly. So we we can check it anywhere. So mm-hmm. what we uh, we're a little bit quirky, but we um, my our bookkeeper happens to be my mum does um, <laughs> all of our accounts from New Zealand. Mm-hmm. So literally we do stuff during the day, sell loads send her information and while we sleep she does it from New Zealand mm. um, but because it's all connected on the cloud we can all check in on where everyone is at mm-hmm. at any point in time and it's very convenient so I think just that usability has made our lives a lot easier because we're not there to kind of trawl through hard to use programs mm-hmm. we're there to be able to sort of easily check in on what's happening mm-hmm. but without the sort of the pain of of systems that are that are clunky so <laughs> yeah it certainly made a difference to us. Okay, so I suppose from my perspective, you as a new startup, you've been through obviously mm. quite a lot in the way of your journey, and you're through the initial funding round, so to speak. Mm. So you're, you're in a situation where you're maybe a little bit more established now. When you're going through this process and, and the kind of experiences that you have, obviously there are a lot of choices that you can make. What helps you to inform those decisions when you're coming to new technology or co-working spaces mm. or any of those other kind of significant decisions that you've made that kind of helped you to get to that next stage or to expand that little bit more? What is it that's influencing your decision? Um, it will probably, like you say, depend on, on what it is we're looking at. But um, one of the biggest things I can think of is just talking to people. Mm. So asking questions and and sort of having a network with other other startups, other entrepreneurs, and just sort of being in constant contact with each other and finding out what's worked for different people it helps you kind of have confidence in the fact that, oh, everyone else is experiencing this as well, mm-hmm. or they've done this before and this is what they did. And obviously you always sort of have to apply it to your, your industry. And also just kind of going for it. Mm-hmm. I think the ability of being in a startup is you can just kind of move pretty quickly, make a decision, and mm-hmm. you find out pretty quick if it it hasn't worked and you can change it so yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. so from your perspective Gary obviously you're getting a bit of a landscape bird's eye view of a lot of these new startups that are operating not just in London but in other places too Zero operates around the world yes that's correct yeah so you're probably getting a really good finger on the pulse of what the emergent trends are within these new startups what do you think is the most pressing needs and urges that are coming forth I think it's hard it's hard to be specific about that we have all different sizes of startup and, mm-hmm. and different industries uh, a lot of our customers are in pretty much any industry you can think of mm-hmm. and so each industry will have its own little idiosyncrasies that will mm-hmm. determine how they're operating i think if there's one common theme that aligns people that are choosing modern technology products whether that's zero or mm-hmm. um, other other online tools for their business is i don't there just seems to be a Kind of a modern contemporary startup blueprint now, which mm. is quite different from the old way of working. Mm. I think t- 10, 20 years ago, if you had the idea to set up a business, I kind of imagine this um, rather um, rather romantic view of, of this entrepreneur on their kitchen table with a, a sheet of paper and a pencil and a calculator trying to work out if yeah. they could make it work. You know, the big, the big thing for starting a business is can I make this work? Can I pay the bills? Can I put food mm. on the table? And and life used to be quite simple. Mm. And you didn't really rely on technology very much when you ran your business in those days. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might speak with your accountant maybe once or twice a year. You might have a bookkeeper that came in and did your books for you, maybe not depending on the kind of business that you were in. Mm. And, and thereafter, it was just down to you and your ability and a lot of luck and you know, like get, getting the customers in the door and those old old um, and really important parts of making a business successful. But I think what we see now is that uh, businesses have at their disposal a whole array of new technologies that mm. didn't exist 10 years ago and never mind 20 years ago. Mm. You know, the ability to, there's that whole kind of notion of fail fast, mm-hmm. a lot of experimentation it's now possible because if you're if you're addressing your customers predominantly through a, a web browser, mm-hmm. that enables you to try and experiment a lot more quickly mm-hmm. than you would have done twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think I think businesses are probably much there's a there's a a, a greater sense of urgency in, in the moment mm-hmm. in running a business today because you get direct feedback, you get direct insight from how your business is running. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you got that 10 or 20 years ago. So I think technology is mm-hmm. 
is um, is a really important part of running a successful business today. Yeah. I think it's interesting that you say this, though, because in general, what what we found when we spoke to other co-working hubs and, and kind of, you know, places where there's a lot of entrepreneurial kind of individuals is that there does seem to be this this fundamental shift in society in the perception of entrepreneurship and starting up new businesses. Mm. It's, it's no longer, I think, considered as that daunting approach to something new so much as it is for some people now an alternative to further education, an alternative to going to university and ending up with you know a significant amount of debt that they have to work through and and people are of that belief now that it's more a case of if I have a great idea I can go try this thing if it doesn't work out fine mm. I can always go back to education but I think there is this this shift in society at the moment that certainly young people now seem to be of the, the opinion you know what I can do this I, I can give it a go totally it's a, it's a real viable career path now mm. I mean being an entrepreneur 20 30 years ago you used to have to have permission. Mm-hmm. You, used to put, you, had, you used to have to be, be able to convince your bank manager to kind of maybe mm-hmm. give you a line of credit mm-hmm. or um, get some kind of funding. Mm-hmm. And the old world of business made it really, really hard to do that. Mm-hmm. And, and actually that put off a lot of people. But I think it's now anybody can register a website with an idea, with a vision, with some passion, you can crowdfund your first run of capital. Mm-hmm. You don't have to get permission anymore from some authority figure to set up your business. And the cost of running a business is also much less as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, in the olden days, I guess you'd probably have to you'd have, to have an office. Mm-hmm. The whole idea of teleworking mm-hmm. 20, 30 years ago was probably not viable. Mm-hmm. And there are so many businesses now that spend the first two or three years of their lives in coffee shops mm-hmm. or in workspaces like this one. Yeah. And so the the barriers to entry are really low. Mm. Uh, that means the whole kind of risk reward dynamic is different. Mm-hmm. And why not? And why not have two or three different sideline businesses mm-hmm. that um, and one of them might work and one of them might uh, might pan out. And 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 I think there's a correlation there between how easy it is to set up a business, mm-hmm. how much easier it is to run a business. Mm-hmm. Because there are so many free tools and, and content management systems. You can build yep. your own website or great tools for doing your bookkeeping or keeping on top of your customer service or whatever it happens to be. Mm. And it's just much easier. And there's something like 50,000 company formations every month in the UK now, which is like way, way, way higher than it would have been 10, 20 years ago. Mm. So it is, I think it is a, it's a, it's a career choice now for a lot of people. Yeah. So I suppose the the question then in that context, if we're assuming that some of our listeners are are thinking about, you know, I have a great idea, Mm. I want to kind of get up and just go and do this thing. At what stage should they really be thinking about accountancy? Because for some people, it's one of those things that, you know, they don't want to worry about it until Mm. they actually have a viable business and they've seen some kind of turnover. For others, it's one of those things that they, you know, they want to get their house in order before they even get out there and into the world, so to speak. So from your perspectives, I mean, you've both got Mm. different experiences with this, but when would you say is the crucial point to, to actually start thinking about this? Yeah, um, I mean, I can tell you a little bit about the journey we took probably and, mm-hmm. and where we got to. We actually started out before we went into the, the online world of craft beer. We began um, sort of brewing ourselves and running sessions, teaching other people how to brew. So Andrew basically arrived from New Zealand, was trying to brew in his kitchen at his house and the floors were sticky from mash, you know, going everywhere and thought actually why don't I sort of set up a space where we can teach people how to brew their own beer and everyone can share the equipment. Um, And we basically did that for about a year before we sort of, throughout that year, talking to people, we had a lot of people saying, I love craft beer, it's so interesting, Um, I never know what to pick, can you help me decide what's, you know, what's the difference between this style or where do I find this beer that I had once and I can't find again? And we did that basically was where the, the online platform came from, where we thought actually we can connect up all these really interesting beers with the people that want to be enjoying them. Um, so it'd be fair to say probably in that first year of kind of experimentation and we all had other jobs at the same time, we probably didn't have much need for the accounting side. We weren't mm. overly charging for much. It was more sort of learn, learn, get to know the scene. Yeah. Um, but as soon as we knew we were going to launch the online site, um, even before we started selling, we set up Zero mm. Software. So basically that meant that, it just made it easier for us. It mm-hmm. like literally from the start meant that 
systems were there and we weren't kind of doing the manual inputting of um do you think this was influenced by the notion that you had to start taking payments yeah was it payments that maybe kind of pushed you into the decision yeah i'd say we knew we were going to be taking payments so we wanted to be ready for it is, is probably the way it came to okay. be honest um and also we knew we'd be buying products so buying beers from the breweries obviously so we knew that we'd need to have the systems in place to mm. to keep track of what we were purchasing and mm. um to know what bills we had going up um, so yeah, that was okay. that was when we basically integrated it. So before launch, and basically made sure that it, it, it integrated with our um, banks. Okay. Bank so before you landed software. on the world, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And from your perspective, Gary, obviously being on the behind the scenes end of this, when would you ideally like to see a business start thinking about bringing somebody like yourselves into the mix? Um, I think it's important from the beginning. I mean, I was watching Dragon's Den the other day and there was this uh, entrepreneur on and and they were peppering her with lots of questions about her profit and her gross profit and Mm. all of her numbers. And she didn't know them. Mm. And guess what? She didn't get any funding. And actually, she looked like she really didn't have a clue about what she was doing in business. Mm -hmm. And and actually, if you speak to any, any, whether it's somebody on Dragon's Den or any successful entrepreneur, one of the key things that, that they'll always tell you that's important is just really knowing your numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, whether you're trying to get investment into your business. Imagine you're trying to get investment into your business and you didn't know how profitable you were. Yep. And you didn't know what your forecasts were. Nobody's going to give me the money. Yep. And and that's just as important on a day-to-day uh, basis as well to know where you're, where you're going in mm-hmm. business. And so I think... Knowing your numbers is always critical. And a lot of businesses um, focus on, well, let's go and get some customers and let's think about product and let's mm-hmm. talk to lots of people about our company mm-hmm. and perhaps lose sight of the importance of numbers. And so I would advocate that I mean, you, don't, you don't have to spend lots and lots of time and effort getting accounting software into your business, mm-hmm. but at least know what your numbers are. And 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 the and the role of an accountant or a bookkeeper in that uh, scenario can often be invaluable mm-hmm. because they'll be able to translate an area that you might not be. You're not an accountant. You're not a bookkeeper. You've got a scratch. You're trying to. You've so got a niche. You're trying to scratch, and and you need somebody to help you. And so the the relationship that these businesses have with accountants and bookkeepers is different mm. from somebody that just does your tax return at the end of the year. It's really so. Is that something that Zero offers? Uh, we, yeah. So 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 we do the software, mm-hmm. and we work with thousands of accountants and bookkeepers who who there are supporting and advising mm-hmm. and guiding those those small businesses. So we have nearly a hundred thousand and customers yep. in business in the UK running our software and mm-hmm. we have about three and a half, four thousand 4,000 accountants and bookkeepers mm-hmm. helping those businesses. Okay. So our focus is on building great software to then empower those businesses to know their numbers. And, okay. and so I think you've got to know your numbers would be the, the, the key takeaway. Okay. And I'd say like from a just having gone through it point of view, it actually seems easier to mm-hmm. just do it from the start. It's easier to set set an accounting software up than to try and set your own systems up from scratch with mm. spreadsheets. I just think that would be just so much harder. I honestly do. So not that we here on Digital Jam are in any way biased, so we're not <laughs> advocating for anybody who might be on this show right now. But what we will say is this. If you are, as a listener, thinking about setting up your own business and you want to do your Dragon's Den, Shark Tank, or whatever it is you're going to do, try and start talking to your investors. Think now about speaking to an accountant and getting your numbers in order and integrating some software that can help you to keep a firm line of sight on what your numbers are going to be. Yes? Yep. (laughs) Wonderful. Okay. So I am curious to understand from your perspectives, you're both in the the trenches, so to speak, of the new startup landscape. What do you think is going to be the most significant change in the next maybe five or 10 years time? Something that is going to significantly impact the landscape, be that a cultural shift in thinking, be it a technological innovation. What What is it that you think will significantly change the way that you do business? Yeah, I mean, I think there will be a lot of changes and there already has been. Mm-hmm. And like we've been operating since January last year. So there's already been changes that have happened and um, we're already anticipating more so I think mobile is probably an obvious one I look after the marketing side of things for Honest Brew and obviously people just spending more and more time on their mobile devices so we're looking at Mm -hmm. how do we give them the best experience on mobile Mm -hmm. if they're not sort of sitting down with a keyboard and a a large screen in front of them so mobile is sort of a a big focus for us Mm -hmm. and then 
one thing we're just watching because I have no idea how this is where it's going. <laughs> is this uh, drones? Oh, of the drone delivery, so, craft beer by drone yeah. delivery, loving it. <laughs> so that's just uh, so probably a bit further down the track, but just something that we're like, hmm, what could this do? So okay. those would be those would be the two. Okay. For me. What about yourself, Gary? So I'm going to say software, mm-hmm. which sounds like a really boring answer, but I'll try and make it. Um, Trying back that up. I think so. I'm a really old guy and I've been in software for a very long time. And my perspective on this is I think we're either in or about to enter a real renaissance period for software and technology. And, mm-hmm. and, I, and I think it's because it's progressive, we don't really notice it so much. Mm-hmm. But I think that, that I remember way, way back when, when I was young and even before I was in, in business. I mean, software used to be about individual productivity. It used mm-hmm. to be a word processor or a spreadsheet, you know, giving that one person mm-hmm. some tools to do their individual job better. Mm-hmm. And then software grew beyond individual PCs to people enabling people to share resources and teams, mm-hmm. collaborating and, and networking together and sharing printers and mm-hmm. sharing files and things like that. Mm-hmm. And then we went through an era where it became an organizational tool so CRM or ERP, you know, like building mm-hmm. software that, that lashed all of the components of an, an entire organization together. Yeah. And so it's gone from individuals to teams and organizations. And I think we're now in an era where it's about industries, mm-hmm. just the next natural progression in that. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing software really coming into uh, industries, whether that's Uber, mm-hmm. into personal trans- transportation or Airbnb, mm-hmm. into hotel and accommodation. And those are just two examples. But I see software, whether it's our software or any other software, is now operating at an industrial level. Mm-hmm. And it's gone through those those progressions down the years. And I certainly remember when software was much simpler. And so I think mm-hmm. applying software and applying technology and process at an industrial level is hugely empowering, whether mm-hmm. that's for the guys that own his brew mm-hmm. and going toe-to-toe with Whitbread or going toe-to-toe with one of the big guys. Mm-hmm. You can now do that because software is so incredibly empowering. And so there's a pretty boring answer to say just software, but I think it's huge. Mm-hmm. And I think the implications of that aren't just accounting and it's not just craft breweries. It's all walks of life and all walks of business are, are, are increasingly becoming rendered in software in some capacity and I think that's incredible from a business perspective. So let me let me put this to you then. You're talking about um, the use of software in a, an, on an industrial scale. What about the unification of, of these softwares or these systems so that we begin to see you know a unifying connector? So whether that's uh, Siri or Coriana or whoever it might be, being able to kind of connect up these things, whether it's uh, Airbnb or Uber or Craft Beers or whatever it might be, to, to be able to do that through a, a single unified... So, so, so I'm really optimistic about that because certainly the, the generation of web-based businesses that have emerged in the last 10 years or so the, the common currency of any great web app worth its salt today is to be as open to connecting with other systems and other other tools, mm. whether that's through open APIs or, 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 or any other traditional means. And so I'm really optimistic that that will happen. And it will actually be a market demand anyway. Customers will demand that. Mm. Already are demanding that mm. from their software companies. Mm. I don't think we would have been anywhere near as successful as we have been. And we have nearly, well, we have over half a million businesses globally on zero. Mm. And a huge part of the success that's that's been behind our growth as a business is because we've always been open. Mm-hmm. And you want to connect zero up to anything, you can do that and it's free and mm-hmm. we won't penalise you to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, all of our documentation is completely open to the public. Anybody can integrate with zero. And, and I think mm-hmm. there are lots of great apps that will do that. Whether that means that... Um, Microsoft open up Cortana or Apple opens up Siri or mm-hmm. Google opens up Google Now or whatever it's using these days. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know the big guys, but o- openness and the ability to enable customers to connect different systems together has been baked in from the very beginning mm-hmm. in this new generation. So I'm really optimistic that that, okay. that will be fine. Okay. So I have uh, one last question for you. Which is um, when you first started with mm-hmm. with the craft beer, um, and you, and you were in that situation of thinking about starting up that new business. 
taking into consideration that a large proportion of our listeners may be somebody who is thinking of starting up their, their own business and have never done anything like this before and probably thinking, oh my gosh, where do I start? Mm. What would you say to those people? What would you be your advice now that you are in mm. the position you're in? What would you say to your, your previous self when you were at the beginning of your journey? Yeah, um, go for it would be one of them, <laughs> probably an obvious one. But I think I have sort of had worked in quite a number of sort of corporate organisations and things and mm. was used to sort of big, big structures and um, processes and just the ability that being in a startup offers you to to try new things, to be, to think quickly, to innovate is so exciting. And when I sort of made, I started doing it sort of, you know, evenings and weekends and early mornings and whatnot. And I think just being able to learn without the stress of, I guess, worrying about money at that point. So I had another job was helpful to, for me to make the leap when it, we, you know, could mm-hmm. have more of us go full time. Mm-hmm. And what I kind of thought in my head was, if I've paid a certain amount to go to university and learn over three years, mm-hmm. I might as well invest like my time and money and in, mm-hmm. in growing a business and learning that way. And if it doesn't work, then I've you know learned so much in that mm-hmm. amount of time that you're never you know you're not losing out. Mm-hmm. Um, but Perfect yeah, example of is. this next generation of <laughs> entrepreneurs that we were discussing earlier. <laughs> yeah, so um, but it's exciting. So and we're we're quite excited to be sort of growing and mm. um, yeah, watch this space, I guess. Okay. So um, in order to allow our lovely listeners to be able to follow you or just generally stalk you and know everything that you're up to, uh, we normally like to provide a Twitter handle or a social media handle of choice. What would that be? Um, I'd probably go for the Honest Brew one, to be honest. Okay. Um, and that is just at Honest Brew. Okay. Um, it's probably the easiest way to reach me. Yeah. Okay. And Gary? And so I'm uh, at Gary Turner, G-A-R-Y. Uh, Turner uh, and our company account is at zero which is X-E-R-O as I said at the beginning great idea, really cool name come up with a a brand that's not (laughs) phonetically uh, spelled as it sounds but when you put it in print it's fine but when you're speaking on a podcast you've got to um, uh, yeah, so it's X E R O. I won't rant. You okay. Won't about that. Okay. And uh, whilst I am going to let you lovely listeners go, and thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you listening. And if you enjoy this content, don't forget to uh, subscribe and review. Uh, and in the meantime, hopefully, I'm going to get these two lovely people to agree to give us discounts for our listeners, which we will post in the notes of this podcast. Thank you once again for joining us. DigitalJamSessions.com.